Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, Holiday Inn Express, the Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn, Russell Street Report, the original Green Turtle, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. In April 1959, Art Wall won the Masters, edging out Carrie Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer by finishing birdie, 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 par birdie. One month later, Ocean City Golf Club celebrated the opening of their first 18 holes. That course has been transformed now into one of the most scenic golf layouts on the East Coast. Come experience 36 of the most beautiful and challenging holes you'll find anywhere. Ocean City Golf Club in Ocean City, Maryland. Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show here on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio, home of the Ravens 93.5 The Beach. Hey, we want to thank our sponsors, of course, the original Green Turtle, the Blue Ox, Bud Light, the Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Geico, the Ocean City Golf Club, JCTickets.net, and Holiday Inn Express. Hey, speaking of tickets, by the way, uh, at our show here tonight, we're going to give away a pair of tickets to see the Ravens head down to D.C. to play the Redskins uh, Sunday afternoon FedEx Field at 1 o'clock. And uh, we've got one more opportunity here with the show uh, with the December 16th game against the Denver Broncos at home M&T Bank Stadium. So come on out to the show next week. We'll give you five tickets. You can throw them into the bin there. And uh, the following week on, uh, I believe, December the 12th on that Wednesday, we will, uh, next Wednesday that is, we will pull the tickets there. And uh, you may be going to see the Ravens in person. Also giving away uh, gift certificates for a nice day here at the Holiday and Express, so uh, right around the corner here from the Winter Fest of Lights, so you can enjoy that, do some shopping, and uh, spend the night here in OC, and uh, also we got the guy code, the gecko to give away as well, so make it worth your while to come on down to the show, so we'd love to see you. You don't just have to be a Ravens News 44 <laughs> member to come on down. All Ravens fans are certainly welcome here on the uh, on the show. Mike Bradley, John Gehrig, Steve Slaza, special guest Billy Carter from BJ's On the Water, and uh, did you make out okay with the storm? We yeah, got a little bit of had, water, huh? We had a little bit of damage. Had, yeah. had some water up under. We lost a walk-in. But, uh, you know, when you consider the damage that was done north of us, it's not even, uh, I feel bad even talking about it. I mean, it's nothing. You know, it's just uh, we're so lucky again here in Ocean City to dodge another bullet. Uh, hopefully uh, it'll, it'll continue. But, uh, geez, I feel bad for the people uh, at the Jersey Shore and Staten Island and Long Island. And it seems like they just keep get, getting banged on. And, uh uh, we're very lucky. I don't think there was a whole lot of damage in Ocean City. I mean, Bayside, we, we a little bit, but uh, not not uh, not like we were expecting. And uh, yeah. very lucky. Yeah, and, and, and we're kind of built for it. I yeah, mean, the, the city and the employees yeah. and how we fight for the mm -hmm. for the uh, for all the work that gets the done with the beach from the seawall right. uh, at all. I mean, the city you can you can see the difference between them and, and up north has, has done nothing, and uh, they they really paid the price. Well. On to football, we've got uh, yeah. we've got a big uh, big week coming up. We're, we're going to continue to recap here a little bit of the uh, the Steelers game before we move on uh, to talk uh, Ravens uh, Ravens Redskins. You know, guys, one of the stats that certainly sticks out in this game, uh, it's continued to be an issue all year for for the Ravens is is third down uh, third down conversions. Again, three of eleven in the game. Pittsburgh was uh, five of thirteen. That was a stat that really helped those guys out. They converted at some big times. And I, I say it always goes back to first down. And I'm. I'm all for taking shots downfield, vertical shots downfield. Obviously, though, the further you go down the field, the higher risk of an incompletion. And then when you face second and ten and you run the ball and you get maybe two or three yards and you're facing third and seven or even third and six, the defense knows a pass is coming. And I just feel like at times maybe where we take those shots, at least field position-wise, that maybe we need to be a little bit more judicious about that and maybe between the 40s or maybe on the other side of the field before we do that because – you take those shots and you're on 15, 20 yard line, and and you're 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 facing third and long. You have to punt, and you give the other team good field position. Yeah, you know, and, and taking shots sometimes. I mean, Torrey Smith had a rough night there, so taking some shots can work. And even if they're incomplete, you know, gives the uh, defense something to think about. True. Uh, but you need to you need to execute. And when you're sailing balls high, I don't know what was going on there with if Joe had a pain somewhere in his back. I don't know what, but these balls were really high. <laughs> I mean, think about it. The ball's supposed to be here, and you have two feet of arms, 
you know? Mm. It's supposed to be here, and your head's two feet, then your arms are two feet, and then they're two feet above that. I mean, that's a big miss. Right? Even on the completions, some of the guys had to make some really good ca catches to, uh, to haul, haul, the, uh, haul the football in for them. And, you know, you just ahead, need John. to execute. So, I mean, that's really the issue. You're not going to have third and short all the time, but you're absolutely right. You need to run the ball a little bit. You run the ball a couple times, and it's third and five. I mean, that opens everything up. You saw the tight end delay. I haven't seen that since 049. We ran out at Lehigh. One double A, Lehigh. No. <laughs> Made my living on the tight end delay. Well, well, Heath Miller was wide open on those plays. Yeah, but, he had a big game. I mean, yeah. that, that, yeah. but everything's open when you have third and five or, or less. And, and Steve, I don't know the breakdown of this, but we talked about one of the issues with the Ravens this year that has not been characteristic of a uh, John Harbaugh coach team is penalties. I believe we're 28th in the league in penalties. That's obviously way towards the bottom there. Eight penalties, 70 yards. I don't know the breakdown between offense and defense, but our offense certainly does not help themselves out when again you may have a positive play and you get negative yardage and it negates it or you start out at first and 10 and now you're faced with first and 15 and it's all downhill from here you can blame cam all you want he's, he's do plenty of criticism but at the same time when, when your players aren't executing when they're not completing passes when they're false starting stuff like that and you're faced with second and 12 third and nine you know, it's very difficult for an offensive coordinator to be successful in the defense. I mean, it was licking their chops. It's, it's pass all the way. No, yeah, we were talking before the show about, you know, when Haloti Nada went offside. You know, that was a huge. Well, that was a defensive one, but yeah. You had him yeah. stop. Yeah. But, you know, I, I read an article about Joe being a rhythm quarterback, and they said, what, what gets you out of the rhythm? He said, get going offside yeah. and receivers dropping footballs. And, you know, both of them happened that night. So, uh, obviously, you know, then I'm thinking, I, well, I you just, know, what about the end of the quarter? That's sort of a rhythm breaker, too. But I, 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 I wish I was Joe Flacco <laughs> because it's everybody else's fault. Good. It's everybody else's fault. <laughs> No, I, I think it's I think it's everybody. It's I mean, the it's schedule a little bit maker's fault. It's Cameron's fault. It's the usher at the stadium. You yell beer here too loud. You're off his cadence or something. You know what I mean? It's everyone else's fault. But the number five. No, number five. He's pure. He's, a, he's got a prime number. It must not. Nothing wrong with can't can't. You can't criticize. Well, it's, it's, always a, it's always a little bit everything, but I think this, uh, you know, Bobby Vermillion pointed this out a few times, so, uh, you know, uh, Billy, with this, when, when you're going four and out or three and out all the time and having to pump the football, when you're time of possession, you're 10 less minutes of possession, you can't get Ray Rice the ball enough. You can't, yeah, you know, yeah. you can't, you can't convert when you don't have the ball enough. And, and your defense also, with that isn't as good as it was last year. When they're on the field time and time yeah. and time again, that's an issue as well. Believe me, the Redskins, uh, being a Redskin fan, we saw that for about the last 10 or 12 years where the, the, the defense had no uh, sooner sat down on the bench, they're back on the field. You know, you start, they almost, they, they stop. And they, they're not playing as hard because they're not, they're, they're getting the, the offensive ball back, but the offense is three and out. Three and out, three and out, three and out. The defense never gets a rest. They're always on the field, and, and the defense suffers. But, uh, but when you got a guy, I know you guys have probably talked about this, but uh, Ray Rice said fourth and 29. No, it wasn't last week's game, but Jesus. I mean, that, that's, that's like one of the greatest things I've ever seen on football. I mean, yeah. uh, if you got a back that can do that, I mean, you got to give him the ball more than 12 times. Well, that's a, and, yeah. Even yeah. if you want to throw it yeah. to him, that's I mean, fine. You know, yeah, but him, I mean, a little on a linebacker. linebacker. Swing pass, and he gets 30 yeah. yards for a first down. I, mean, I can see a 30-yard pass, but this is a little, uh, this little flat pass, and he knows exactly where the first down marker is. He's probably the only one on the field that really did know where it was. And, uh, and he didn't stop till he, till he got there. That's right. His reward <laughs> yeah. for that play was he didn't yeah. have to really show up to work yeah. this week. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, and I'll give you another compliment. Is I think, really, you, have, you guys have the two best wide receivers. I think uh, Bolden and uh, Torrey Smith are two of the, of the best pair of receivers in football. You guys well, probably just. Are you trying to butter us up? No, I'm not, but I'm saying I like watching them. When they're all like they're watching, there, yeah. you know. Well, you won't yeah. be, feel so bad for what, you know, what's going to happen to you this Sunday. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, you remember I did say a few nice things about you. Bolden is big time. I mean, right. he's, he's yeah. like, I mean, he's world class. Well, now you can plug your Christmas party. Yeah, Christmas party's tomorrow, but <laughs> Glenn just told me that this doesn't show till Friday. The party will be over. But we, right. Man, it was a great time. You should have got in there. Teenage Russ and the fabulous Russ dads. Unbelievable. Just got in from their European tour. We had to come up and pick, pick them up in BWI. And it was unbelievable. That's right, I forgot that. John, I wanted to ask you, I, I thought, <laughs> I thought a critical part in the game that nobody's talking about in this one, and it was a three-point game as most Raven Steelers games are. We scored that touchdown with Anquan Bolden, and I always say that the biggest yeah. possession defensively is the one right after you score because if you shut them down there, after you scored a touchdown, that's a momentum builder. But if you allow them in any shape or form to score points there, 
that, that takes away from what you just did. And what happened? Tucker had a bad kickoff. They returned it to the 40. It was one of the few times special teams this year, and, and in this game, special teams was pretty good most of the game. But they give up a you know return, good field position at the 40. The defense allows them to get in a field goal position and make it 13-6. to six. Okay, at halftime. So that three point they eats into the seven we just scored. It's thirteen to six. You take that off the board. It's twenty twenty. We're in overtime. I mean, but who knows how the game would have played out? But my point is, is that I thought that was kind of a key thing. Even though they just got a field goal there, that was kind of big in my mind. And I saw that, and I'm thinking at halftime, man, that may came come back to bite us. And you know what it did? Well, especially hurt us when we come out of halftime. I hate when the defense is on the field after right after the half. The first possession after halftime, you got half the stadium is still in taking a leak or buying beer <laughs> talking or doing whatever you know the stands are empty you got no you got no momentum for the defense no crowd and they march right down the field and punch us in the face 13 13. so yes you're right you, you want to stop them there and you want to take you and when you can get a double digit lead that's obviously uh, huge and the ravens had a couple opportunities to do that go up you know two touchdowns or, or something we just we didn't execute on offense or, or in defense in this case and then when we had the opportunity to, to kind of put it away a little bit or create some separation, put some pressure on Batch, we didn't do it on offense. Steve, let me let me ask you, uh, I, I guess, two things with, uh, with talking about that a little bit. With we we talked about the offense and blame them. They have their fair share of the blame. You know, I will uh, try to spin this a little bit. Okay, we clearly didn't have our best game. Joe Flacco had one of his worst games you could say of his career. Yet, and I know we were at home, but yet against the number one defense, that's a very good Steeler defense out there. Let's not take credit away from them. On an off day, we still scored 20 points. And in this series, back and forth, that's kind of a lot of points. Outside of that 35-7 last year, that rarely happens. In this series, that's a lot of points, actually. You'd think you'd win the game. And defensively, they, they certainly have to share the brunt of the blame on this one. I, you know, I, it's up to the fans to decide who gets blamed more. I don't know that it matters. A loss is a loss. But... The defense certainly wasn't on their game, as John talked about. Now, that's, I mean, the whole game, I was just sitting there going, okay, he's just sitting back, he's biding his time, he's going to blitz them, they're going to come after him. You know, I don't know why, when you have a patchwork offensive line and you got a third-string quarterback, why you wouldn't go after him. But they just kept him in the game. And you, like you're saying, that, that field goal before halftime was huge because they, they went at halftime saying, you know what, we can do this anytime we want. You know, where if you hold them there, like you're saying, you got a two-possession lead, they would have won the game. You know, you knew it was going to come down to a field goal because the last – nine games or whatever have been field goal games. When you allowed them field goal, you knew, hey, you know, they thought in their minds, hey, we're coming back. But I just couldn't understand why they weren't going after them, especially in the first game where you had four sacks. So. Well, I want to pick up on that. Next segment, we'll talk about uh, some of the differences from the first game to the next game, and then we'll get into the Redskins preview with our special guest, Billy Carter. More to come. It's the Ravens Rap Show on Comcast Speech TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio. Home of the Ravens, it's 93.5 The Beach. We are back with more. Keep it here. Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, Holiday Inn Express, the Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn, Russell Street Report, the original Green Turtle, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome to the Comfort Inn Gold Coast. Conveniently located just one block from the beach and adjacent to shopping at the Gold Coast Mall and the movie theater. Newly renovated and open year-round with a marvelous bayfront view. Visit us on the web at comfortgoldcoast.com and see our hot deals and great golf packages or simply call our direct reservation line to plan your stay. 